Good morning, sisters and brothers. Good morning. Good morning. It's just wonderful to be here on this day where we're receiving some moisture from God's heaven. Amen to that. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be pre preaching up here uh, not and celebrating with the Reverend Melinda Bobo from Pinedale, St. Andrews, correct? <laughs> yes. And uh, let us continue our worship with music, sacrament, and, and liturgy. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Almighty, Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are saved. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty and everlasting God who in the paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Are there any young people that would like to come up and visit with me for a little while this morning? How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. What do you call the the those cat ears? Cat ears? It's for my party today. Oh, it's, it's my birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. That's nice. And what what do you got in the in the your backpack? Oh wow. A cat that can turn into a dog. A cat that turns into a dog. It's a bulldog and a kitty cat. That's pretty cool. I got it for my birthday. You like it? That's a, that's pretty, is, is it like a puppet? Kind of a. You can move it as a puppet. It's, I've never seen anything like it. It's like a squish marrow that you can put your hand in and turn into a dog. <clears throat> How you doing, Gus? Good. Good. Do, you know, when I saw those ear, those, I thought they were um, fox, foxy, you know? And I was thinking of that song, What Does the Fox Say? Have you, have you, guys, have you guys have heard that? Yeah, no. Yeah. 
No, it's a, it's kind of a cool song. Maybe your mom and dad will play it for you sometime. What does the fox say? Yeah. Cow says moo, right? Yeah. What do you have, Paige? My, my pink bunny stuffy. Stuffy is his name? No, um, his name is Bun Bun. Bun Bun? It's a, it's a boy bunny? No. No, a girl bunny? No. I have a bun back at my house that's a bun that is blue and its name is Bun Bun. Bun Bun? That's a pretty good name for a bunny. Yeah. I like him giving him a hairdo. Oh, you give him. So is your is your uh, your puppet of of a cat and a dog? Is it? It's now it's a cat. Cool. How you doing, Wes? Everything good. Do you guys ever? Do you ever? When your mom or dad tells you something, do you ever have any doubts about what they tell you, or do you just? They, when they tell you something, it's usually right on the money, isn't it? Yeah. You ever say, are you sure about that? <laughs> you do? James does. James does. James. Are you a skeptic, James? Do you, are you, do you sometimes wonder if they're telling you, giving you the good story? Or? I don't know. No, you're pretty. Yeah, that's, that's sometimes if you have doubt, that's okay. You know, you just. Ask your mom, ask your dad. I'm not sure about this. You're fine. Floppy? You know who he is. Yeah. Sometimes people name their bunnies Flopsy. It's really nice to have you guys here today. We have kitty cats downstairs. Kitty cats? Real ones? No, like just toys. Toy kitty cats? How many have a kitty? I can't have them because my brother is allergic to them. Mm. We used to have two cats. Yeah. Because I, I love kitty cats. Do you? And I want them really bad, but I can't have one because my brother's allergic to them. Well, yeah, that's nice that you don't, you know, you know that your brother, would his, his eyes would water and sneeze all the time if you had a kitty. Yeah. But you still know who he is, right? <laughs> Even though you can't see him. Some people say, blessed are those who believe but do not see. I can make him shorter. <laughs> you can just do about anything to that guy. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And you, how old are you today? Happy birthday. Thank you. I think you guys are going to go now with Miss Theo. Yeah. And, and uh, thanks, Miss Theo. That's what his bag looks like now. The bag. Oh, the bag. Thank you. Bye. See you, guys. Who's taking the bag today? You want to take it, Paige? Well, yeah, because Thank you. All right. See ya. The first lesson today is from Acts chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were, were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 133. May we read by half verse. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. It's like fine oil upon the head, upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Glory to the Father. Our second lesson is from 1 John 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard <clears throat> from him, and that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not, not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I have to tell you, for those of you who were not at the ECW retreat, the Episcopal Church Women's Retreat, you missed out on a really fun time. Because there's something about gathering together in joy, in the presence of God, that is incredible, breathtaking, where we discover things about each other and about ourselves that we never would have imagined. And we also discover we are so much more than we thought. So, Alison Cook had her section where she was talking about emotions and how so often we treat our emotions like things that are good and bad. The emotions that we feel good, those are good emotions. The emotions where we don't feel so good, those are bad emotions and we should squash those as hard as we can and do our best to do anything to let the good ones maximize their presence in our lives. But the truth is, that's not what emotions are for. Emotions don't tell us anything except, here's how we're responding to things that are within us and outside of us, things within our experience, things we encounter. And sometimes encounter are not pleasant. We should not be happy about those things. And sometimes the things we encounter are amazingly happy. And those things shouldn't upset us. So part of what our emotions help us do is evaluate where we are with ourselves and our own lives and in relation to the world. 
And let's remember those emotions are products of brain chemistry and body chemistry. They exist in reality. They are not just figments of our imagination that we can just turn on and off at will. And it's a really important thing to be aware of that if we're going to be in healthy relationship with our whole selves, our minds, our souls, our hearts, and our bodies themselves. Because sometimes we act like we're little creatures that sit up in here and run everything else by remote control. That's not how we are. Because the brain is in the body. And so everything that happens to the body happens to the brain, happens to us. And we need to embrace that. That's how we live healthier lives, is recognizing those parts of ourselves that perhaps others have told us we're not supposed to be letting out. And sometimes letting them out. Because that's how we share how we feel with one another. And if we don't share how we feel, how can we be in relationship? How can we be in right relationship, which is what God wants for us? So my segment was on the body, was on the physical piece. And it's the same thing. The body, this creature that is ours, that is us, helps us discover our world, but it also helps us discover ourselves. And we need to not treat our bodies like these separate tools that we manipulate to make things happen, but recognize they are an integral part of our identity. And we need to learn to love them and appreciate them. Because remember, who made us? God. And at creation, God says, all of this that I have created is good. And unless you want to call God a liar, <laughs> you know within yourself that we, each and every one of us, are created in the image of God and we are good. Not that we don't screw it up, because we do. <laughs> but that's not God's fault. God did God's best. But what it tells us is, even when we are not doing what God would have us do, we always have that capacity to turn it around, to be the child of God we're created to be. And part of that is owning our bodies as part of that gift God has given us and living in that way. So now, those of you who didn't go, now you know how much fun we had. <laughs> but we see that in our readings. You know, here we are, second Sunday of Easter. So we have the dis having been told that Jesus has been resurrected, just as he kept saying over and over and over and over and over again that was going to happen. And that he was going to come see them. So here they are, in this room, hiding from the authorities, because they're still in fear of their lives. And Jesus comes to them in the midst of this room. And they're shocked, and they're terrified, because regardless of the fact that the Son of God has said, I will see you, well, you know, that's not really likely, right? And being practical people, they knew that probably wasn't really going to happen. And yet here he is. And they're overwhelmed with joy. And he says to them, peace be with you. And my spirit breathe into you. And this is one of those great moments that reminds us of creation itself. When God decides to make a human, 
puts together this body of clay and then breathes God's life into it. We contain the breath of God. But we forget. And so part of what Jesus is doing in the Gospel of John, when Jesus says, I am going to give you the Holy Spirit, and it's going to be the very breath out of my mouth, out of my lungs. The air I have breathed, I breathe into you. It's like artificial respiration. Those who have lost their breath are given it again, and they get their life back. That's what Jesus does for his disciples. And he says, now I have breathed my life into you. I want you to take that breath and breathe it out into the world. And they do. These people go, these people go, from, be go from being terrified for their own lives and safety to leaving this little room where they're huddled up and go, out into the marketplace, and they let everyone know what they have learned, what they have experienced, what being with Jesus has done for them. And their lives are transformed, and the lives of the people they encounter are transformed, and thus we have been transformed. These people who have been hanging out with this ragtag revolutionary saying the kingdom of God can be right here. All we have to do is bring it if we love one another. Those people have discovered that they can change the world. Because that's the power of the breath of God. And that is the breath that we carry within us. That breath of life for the world. And how do we know this? We know this because this is the breath that in Acts has the members of the early church, these early Christian gatherings, turning their backs on what the world says matters. And what they say is, you know, Jesus told us to take care of each other. That's what we're going to do. So those of us who have more are going to sell what we own, and we're going to bring the money to the church, and we're going to make sure everybody has enough. The early church was actually well known that took care not only of its own people, but of people in the wider community who did not share their same beliefs. Because whoever needed help was who they helped. And they did what it took. And they fought Jesus, and they made them real. Letter to the churches about walking in darkness when you're claiming to be walking in the light. He's warning people that talk isn't good enough. You have to do. Because what you do is what you believe. And the word that's often used in the Gospels for faith that is not intellectual or emotional act. That word means what we do. Because what you believe is what you do. You may not want that to be so. <laughs> and we're good at denying that. Well, I do that, but I really don't think that way. But then why are you doing it? Our job is to make those things come together so that what we do among ourselves and in the world is what we believe, is what we say. That what goes on in our head and what goes on in our hearts and what goes on in our hands and our feet are all the same thing. 
that we, like those early disciples and all of the disciples and saints that have come after them, enact our faith that people, when they see how, they, how we live, they know we are Christians. And if you want to continue with that song, by our love, by our love, they will know we are Christians by our love. And it's a love that does, not a love that talks, or not a love that merely talks. Because we need all of those things coming together. Because certainly, the disciples would never have made more disciples without telling their experience of Jesus. But it was their lives that revealed what that really meant to them how important it was. And it's the same thing we're called to do, is we are called to take these words of scripture, the words of Christ saying, follow me. Follow in my footsteps. Walk where I walk. Go in my way. Breathe in my breath and breathe it out into the world. And the kingdom of God can be right here. Because the kingdom of God is not the pictures that are painted to illustrate its glory, the streets of pearl, the golden buildings, the angels singing overhead. Those are to show us how fantastic it is. But that's not it. Jesus is explicitly clear. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is the kingdom of love. And the more we pour love into the world, the closer that kingdom gets. And when we are finally able, as children of God, all of God's children, everywhere in the world, are able to love one another, As God loves us, the kingdom will be here. And that's our job. That's the work that we have been given to do, to go out into the world, to bring that message of love, to breathe out with every breath that life-giving presence of God in the spirit, in the fire, in the very air. And we breathe in Jesus from all of those around us who are doing the same thing. It's why we come together in communities. So we don't have to be alone. We don't have to try to do this by ourselves. We don't have to think or imagine how we're going to be perfect because we never are. Because the only perfect one is God. But what we can do is strive to the best of our ability to live into that image in which we were made. And we strive to help each other live into that image in which we were made. And when any of us fall down, we help each other get back up. And that's our call. That's who we are. And we are that in this world, we don't have to wait till we're dead and buried and get to the next. We can have that loving relationship here and now. And that, in fact, is what Jesus calls us to dedicate ourselves to. Love now. Don't let it slide. Love here and now with everything you are, with everything you have. And you will find yourself living in that joyful presence, that heavenly experience of God right next to you no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what tragedies may befall you, 
or what joys come your way. God will be present with you in all of these things around you and within you so that you can know that our God is a God of love and fellowship and passion and fire who treasures each and every one of us. And it is that God to which we dedicate ourselves and our lives with joy. Amen. Please stand. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 6 of our service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Through the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God brings a new gift of peace into the world. Let us offer our prayers with thankful hope, saying, God has ordained the blessing, life evermore. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon your church, O gracious one, that we, we may be of one heart and soul, live together in unity, and bring the light of your reconciling gospel of forgiveness and peace to the whole world. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. <clears throat> Inspire the leaders of our nation and all in authority throughout the world with the breath of your peace, that they may share their possessions with the poor and bring justice and comfort to all who live in fear or need. God has ordained the blessing. Life forever. Be present to any who huddle fearfully behind closed and locked doors and let the healing touch of the wounded Jesus come to comfort all who suffer anywhere on the earth. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Let this community walk in your light and do our work of reconciliation revealing the eternal life that was with the Father and has been revealed to us. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Hear the cries of all who grieve like Thomas and of all who suffer from any form of anguish, illness, or hurt, that they may touch the healing presence of the risen Christ. We remember especially Sarah, Sarah Patricia, Sarah, Mary, Mary Stevie, Teresa, Mary, Jelani, Holly, Josanne, Gail C., Ed, Pam, Laura, and Rebe. 
Complete our joy as we offer our words of thanksgiving to you, especially for St. Andrews in Matitsi and the Ignite Wesleyan Church in Sheridan. Receive into your eternal life all who have died, that they may have life in Christ's name, remembering especially the loved ones of Chuck and Loretta Holloway, for whom the altar flowers were given. Christ has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Fill your people with the breath of your Holy Spirit, O God, and bring us the assurance of forgiveness that we may be enlivened to participate in Christ's work of reconciliation on behalf of all the world and share in his eternal life here and now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, I know there's a couple of announcements and recognitions this morning. Uh, one thing that Karen Nicolarson asked me to tell everyone is these uh, Easter lilies are of to any, for anyone that wants one. And Karen, I would assume it's first come, first serve on those? Yes. And then I know uh, I, was, I was here for a little while yesterday, and uh, I know that the retreat was, went wonderfully. And, uh, you know, when you recognize people, you always leave somebody out and then you uh, hurt feelings. But I know there was a ton of work done by Molly and the committee, Ruth, Sarah, uh, Juanita, and, I, and, I, and, and it went wonderfully. Everybody's had a mountaintop experience, right? And uh, it went really well. And, uh, yeah, Melinda, thank you so much for coming down from Pinedale, braving the treacherous travel across our wonderful state. And uh, yeah, it was a great weekend. It's just great to have everyone here and be here with y'all. Uh, anything else? Birthdays, anniversaries. Birthday jar. Mrs. Holloway, it's your birthday. When's your birthday? Today. Happy birthday. Very good. We'll go to we'll go to page eight hundred thirty.
prayer do you like? This one or that one? We're going to do prayer number. Okay. It's her birthday. Jolie. It's your birthday. When's your birthday, Jolie? You guys are birthday sisters. Yeah, you're soul sisters. Yeah. yeah. It's Jolie's birthday and Loretta's birthday. And we're going to say the birthday prayer number 51 on the 830. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in his heart, may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jolie, may God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. And Loretta, may God bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I think we had some button pushing going on. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry.
make God laugh by telling him the plans you had. And now I know that to be true, cause I could never dream of you. Praise the Lord, there's something more than what we think we're fighting for. Just what could we be missing if we only got what we were wishing, baby? my childhood fantasies It's hard within to cut him on but higher than my hopes could flow better than I ever could have dreamed More villains and sad endings I suppose But I'll take the It's nothing like my childhood fantasies. It's all than I could have known, but higher than my hopes could flow, better than I ever could have dreamed. More villains and sad endings, I suppose, but I'll take the We sure would appreciate it if the young people came up and helped us with you, Chris. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forevermore sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him, Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him. Come, all those who have much faith and those who have little, those who have been here often and those who have not been here long, those who have tried to follow you 
and those who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites us. It is God's will that those who desire God should meet God here. First hymn is number 200. Our next hymn is number 31, Ancient Words. Yeah. 
next hymn is number 594. 594. have one more, but we need help from the, the Reverend Mike Evers on this one. This wouldn't be the same without him.
Let us pray the post-communion prayer found on the bottom of page 12 in our service bulletin. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And for assuring us in the holy mystery that we are living members of the body of your Son and heir of your Peace be with you. For God has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Peace be with you. For the wounded Christ is risen with healing in his breath. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit and live in the life of forgiveness. And the blessing of our ever-present God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and comfort you now and always. Amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. child of the light, I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both the light, the lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on Father, in him there is no darkness at all, the night and the day are both alike, the lamp is the light of the city of God, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.